Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. As water commissioner, there's no telling what the great Gildersleeve does all day. But his life falls into a definite pattern every afternoon at five minutes to five. He moves the clock to five and closes his office. By 5.15, he's home greeting his little family. At 5.45, he has enjoyed a romp with the twins. And at six o'clock sharp, he's at the dinner table. Say, it's a quarter past seven. Where is he tonight? Yeah, where is he? I haven't the slightest idea, Leroy. Uncle Mort's never done this before. Don't you think we should start dinner, Bronco? Well, let's wait a little longer, Marge. If we wait any longer, I'll be too weak to eat. <laughs> Just take another hitch in your belt, Leroy. It's wrapped around me now like a yo-yo string. <laughs> Maybe we should give him a few minutes more. Sure. Uncle Mort's probably working late at the office. <laughs> I phoned the office and nobody answered. I even phoned Mr. Pete. Any news from Mr. Gillsleeve yet? Uh, not yet, Bertie. I'm sorry about your dinner, Bertie. Uh, can we wait a little longer? Bertie can wait, but she's not sure the dinner can. Boy, I can't wait to tie into that beef stew. Leroy, we're not having beef stew. We aren't? <laughs> we started out with beef stew, but I had to add so much water, we winding up with beef soup. I see what you mean, Bertie. Yes, yeah, so the Bertie started out with beef stew, but the water commissioner didn't show up, so she had to add water. Now we're having beef soup. Oh, Mr. Well. Franco, you know, know why we're not having beef stew? Yes, Bertie, the water commissioner didn't show up. That's right. I had to add so much water, we're having beef soup. <laughs> I can't wait to tie into that beef soup. <laughs> well, at least Uncle Mort could have phoned. Let's go to the table. Bronco, will you carry me? Uh, you're not that weak, Leroy. <laughs> Never mind, Bertie. I'll get it. Maybe it's Unc. You wouldn't ring the doorbell. Well, maybe it's a kid with a telegram. Oh, hi, Judge. Me, Leroy. Oh, who is it, Leroy? It's a false alarm. <laughs> I thought you were a kid with a telegram. Well, if you like, I'll run back and get my bicycle and my little cap. <laughs> Good evening, Judge. Marjorie. Hello, Bronco. Hello, Judge Hooker. I thought I'd drop by and take Gildy to the Jolly Boys meeting this evening. Well, Uncle hasn't come home, Judge. He hasn't. We haven't even heard from him. We haven't even eaten. Is that a me? No, it's the Judge, Bertie. Stew, Judge. Soup. Uh, so I gather. Uh, have you any idea where Unky might be, Judge? No, I haven't, Marjorie. This is very unusual for Gildy. I suppose I should tell you that... No, I don't want to worry you. No, we're not worried. What are you going to say, Judge? Well, I was by his office this morning and again this afternoon. He hasn't been there all day. He hasn't? But if I were you, I wouldn't worry. Perhaps he spent the day reading meters. Hey, maybe he got stuck under a house. <laughs> Leroy, Uncle... He doesn't, but the meter reader could be sick. No. No, something's happened or Uncle Mort would be home by now. He could be having dinner downtown. Well, he still would have called. And we phoned everywhere. Maybe he tried to phone you and your line was busy. I wouldn't worry. Heck, I wasn't worried till you came, Judge. Well, I have to run along, but I have no doubt what he'll turn up at the Jolly Boys meeting. Bye, all. Goodbye, Judge. Goodbye. Bye. Don't worry. Well, guess we better have dinner. Yeah, I guess we better. Yeah. Uh, I uh, guess we'd better tell Bertie we're ready to eat. Yeah, guess we'd better. Bertie, we decided to eat. Yes, ma'am. I just dished it up because it's now or never. Uh, that looks wonderful, Bertie. Thank you. Did the judge know anything about Miss Gilsley? Not a thing, Bertie. It seems Uncle wasn't in his office today. Ain't that strange? Well, I'm sure nothing's happened to Uncle Mortary would have called. There's the phone now. Yeah. Uh, I'll answer it. Hey, I just had a horrible 
for? What, Leroy? What if this is a call from some gang and they're holding out for ransom? Oh? Leroy, you read too many detective stories. Well? But I would like to know who Bronco's talking to. With the phone in the hall, you can never hear what anybody's saying. What if that's what you wanted, I'll keep it a secret. I won't tell the family. Yeah, that's the way I wanted Bronco. If they knew, you know how Marjorie and Leroy and Bertie would worry. Yeah, I guess they would. And I don't want anybody to worry. Do you pack my suitcase for me, Bronco? Sure, if that's the way you want it. Good boy. Now, bring me the suitcase tonight and be sure nobody sees you. Uh, just as you say, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, and Bronco. Yeah? And remember, you're in charge now. Take good care of little Leroy. I will. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, are you sure you're doing the right thing? Yeah, I've given this a lot of thought. And it's better this way. Goodbye, my boy. Goodbye. Gosh. <laughs> Bronco, don't just sit there. What did Uncle Mort say? What did he say? Uh, uh, pass the bread, please. Is Unky all right? Yeah, oh, that's one of the things he said. He'll be all right. Well, that's a relief. Uh, yeah. Now I'll pass you the bread. Thank you, Leroy. Are you sure he's all right? Marjorie, I just told you he was all right. He says he's fine. He says not to worry. I know, He's but... okay. He's fine. Great. He told me so himself. What do you want me to do? Get him to sign an affidavit over the phone? <laughs> uh, where, where's my coffee? You just poured it over your bread. <laughs> oh, I thought it was syrup. <laughs> oh, sir. Now, Mr. Bronco, you're a little nervous. Me? Bronco. Yeah, Marge? Where was Uncle Mort when he called? Where was he? Well, there are a lot of phones around town, Marge. It could have been any place. Well, let's everybody eat, huh? Oh, for corn's sake, there's something going on here. When is he coming home, Bronco? Fine dinner, Bertie. Yes, sir. Bronco? Uh? I asked you, when is Uncle Mort coming home? Yeah, when's he coming home? What's he been doing all day? Yeah, what's he been doing? Bronco, where is he? Yeah, where is he? Shall I teach his dinner while? Uh... No, Bertie. Then you do know when he'll be home. I do not. But you do know where Unc is. Sure, I know all about it. But he said not to tell you, so I can't tell you. I guess he ain't gonna tell us. Big secret, big deal. <laughs> I should have answered the phone, I'd tell you. Well, I know how to get it out of him. I'll be back in a minute. Bronco. Bronco, where are you going? I'm going upstairs. Wait a minute. Darling. What do you want? Come on. Sit down here on the stairs. No, Marge, sit don't... Sit down here beside me. Oh. Okay. <laughs> now, if Uncle Mort asked you to keep a secret, I understand you didn't want to say anything in front of Leroy and Bertie, but I'm your wife. You've never kept anything from me. No, I haven't. All right. Up until now. <laughs> you mean you aren't going to tell me? I can't. But you don't keep things from your wife. Now, Marge, a man can't tell his wife everything. Well, I thought you'd never want to keep anything from me. It isn't what I want to do. Uncle Mort said I had to. Who are you taking orders from, Uncle Mort or your wife? Marge. If we aren't any closer than that, we may as well be miles apart. Now, Marge, you're being unreasonable. Oh, am I? Well, if you can't tell me where my own... You may as well get lost, too. Oh, Marge. Everybody hates me. I'll be darned if I'll ever answer another phone. Marjorie, where's Mr. Bronco? Oh, he's upstairs sulking. Yes, sir. It sure is nice to know Mr. Gilsey is all right. You didn't find out anything else, did you? Oh, I can't get anything out of Bronco. That big lug. Now, Miss Marjorie, let's take it easy. Well, Bertie, if he knows something about Uncle Mort, there's no reason why he can't confide in me. No, ma'am. And I told him so. Yes, and I heard you clear in the air. <laughs> you ought to take it easy, Miss Marjorie. Well, 
I guess I did let my temper get the best of me. But this whole thing seems so ridiculous. Yes, um, but when one man of the house is already gone, we want to be sure where the other man is. <laughs> well, I, I may have said things I didn't mean to to Bronco, but he'd never take me seriously. Mark! Hey, Mark! What's the matter, Leroy? Come on, run out front! Stop him! Stop who? Bronco, he's leaving! Leaving? Leroy, what are you talking about? He just... Another rooster flew to coop. Gosh, I'm the only man left. The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. There's big news tonight. The great Gildersleeve has disappeared. All we know is that he made a secret phone call to his son-in-law, Bronco, telling him to pack a bag for him. To put it mildly, the water commissioner's little family is puzzled. He's supposed to be at the Jolly Boys meeting tonight. Let's see what's going on up there. got the piano keys hot, Peavy. I'm ready to sing. Mm, I'm always ready. <laughs> Too bad the chief's out of town. We'll be short-handed. Yeah, I wonder what's keeping the commission a judge. Search me. I don't want to search you. All I'd find is some old pill boxes. <laughs> Corny barber. <laughs> mm, that sounds like the judge, and he's in a hurry. Yeah, what does the judge take to give him all that pep? Well, he tried everything. Good evening, gentlemen. I have news. So do we. You're late. What's the excitement, Judge? Have you seen Gilda? No, he's late, too. Yeah, he's holding up the chicken. Well, if Mr. Big Shot President don't take no more interest than this, let's go on without him. Just the three of it? Why not? Wait, gentlemen, and hear my news. I was by Gilda's house, and he did not come home to dinner. Stood them up, too, huh? Lloyd, that's unusual for Gilda. You mean to miss a meal? Well, maybe he's having dinner with that widow friend of his. If so, he would have told the family, Peavy. Why? He's over 21. Way over. I bet he'd rather be with that dame than with us. <laughs> Who wouldn't? Gentlemen, I think that you're taking this too lightly. Well, if you ask me, he's taking this club too lightly. Now, I don't usually take a stand like this, but I think it's time to teach Mr. Jokes a lesson. Let's sing his favorite song. I'll even sing his part. It's a good idea. Well, if you refuse to be concerned... Here we go. Sweet 16. <laughs> Somebody's off. <laughs> Proceed, Lloyd. Okay, if you can take it, I can. Come to me, or my dream of I love you as I loved you when you were sweet. Yeah, Johnny, good to me, too. You know, I think the peeve is glad the commission ain't here. Gentlemen, getting back to Gilday, I hate to sound a sour note. Why? You sounded plenty of them when we were singing. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> it concerns me a little that nobody seems to know Gilday's whereabouts. Well, maybe he's home by now. Why don't I call and find out? Uh, Jan, if you get him, tell him I'm singing his part. He'll be here in two shakes. Mr. Gilsey's resident. Birdie, this is Judge Hooker. Oh, hello, Judge. 
Any news about Miss Gilsleeve? No. We thought perhaps she'd be home by now. No, sir, he ain't home. Things around here is in a terrible shape. Oh? Miss Marjorie's upstairs with a headache. Mr. Bronco ain't here. Leroy wants his uncle. Judge, what are we going to do? Well, Bertie, don't worry. Don't worry? Look on the bright side. If anything serious had happened, we would have heard by now. Yes, sir. Just keep calm and call us if Gildy shows up. Yes, sir. Bye, Bertie. Goodbye. Pretty upset at home, huh, Judge? Naturally, Floyd. But as I told Bertie, if anything serious had happened, we'd know by now. It's a fine time for the chief of police to be out of town. I doubt it, but there could have been foul play. <laughs> Maybe our president is vacationing in Florida. Hey, let me look in the piano bench. <laughs> Floyd, what are you up to? I'm checking the club's funds. We had eight dollars and a half in the treasury here between the sheet music. Oh, Floyd! It's here. We got nothing to worry about, fellas. <laughs> he left town without a penny. <laughs> oh, Mr. Gildersleeve wouldn't do anything like that. Of course not. I'm certain we'll hear from Gildy's family soon. Yeah, why don't we sing another song? Maybe we'll pass the time. This song's for the commission, our missing member. Poor Gildy. How about singing My Buddy? <laughs> After all, he was our buddy. Yeah. Hey, gang, do you think something could have happened to him? Well, let's not let our imaginations run away with it. No, indeed. Let's see. Okay. Just because he's a water commissioner don't mean he fell in the reservoir. <laughs> Floyd, just play the piano. Sure. My buddy for the commission. <laughs> shouldn't be singing. We should be out looking for Gildy. Well, I think we ought to call the police. I know a guy's got a bloodhound. We'll stop by the police department, then go to Gildy's house and start the search from there. It's a good idea. Follow me, men. You follow me. I'm with <laughs> that it was right to come over here and see you. Judge, it's sweet of you jolly boys to come over. What are we going to do? Now, Marjorie, don't worry about Gildy. Well, I'm not just worried about Ike. Bronco left, too. He did? Two hours ago. He grabbed a suitcase and beat it. No kidding. Where'd he go? I don't know. <laughs> now, now, Marjorie. Oh, Judge, what will we do? Don't worry. We'll do something. Yeah, we'll do something. Yes, we will. <laughs> what will we do? I even phoned the newspaper and they don't know anything. Hey, where's Chief Gates? He'd know what to do. He's out of town. Oh, for a corn's sake. <laughs> the police department has been alerted. Yeah, and I got a bloodhound coming. I don't want any bloodhound chasing my uncle. <laughs> Leroy, we're just trying to find him. Now, 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 quiet, everybody. In the absence of the chief of police, I, being a judge... We'll take charge. Oh, yeah? Who's furnishing the bloodhound? <laughs> Floyd, please. Well, now then. Birdie? Yes, Your Honor? What do you know about this situation? Well, all I know is the house is falling apart. Yeah, we know. But can you cast any light upon these mysterious disappearances? Well, I didn't see Mr. Gilsley disappear, but I sure saw Mr. Bronco disappear. Do you know of any reason why Bronco would pack a bag and leave? Shall I tell him, Miss Marjorie? Well, we did have a little spat, but it wasn't serious. Get her! You leave home and she says it isn't serious. <laughs> Judge, I'm sure Bronco knows what happened to Uncle Mort. Oh? But he won't tell us anything. He got a phone call and he clammed up. That's what he did, Judge. He clammed up. Now, now, Bertie, don't get excited. I'll get to the bottom of this. I wish that bloodhound would get here. We need some brains in this case. <laughs> Everybody's coming in the door. Hey, hey, Bronco! Hello, everybody. Oh, Bronco, I'm so glad you're back. Hiya, Marge. 
Bronco Thompson, where have you been? <laughs> I'm sorry, Marge, but I can't tell you. You see, Judge, you won't tell us anything. Bronco, do you know what happened to Mr. Gildersleeve? Come on, kid, loosen up. Did you see Uncle Bronco? Oh, wait a minute. How many times do I have to tell you that I can't talk? Traitor! Watch it, little brother-in-law. Now, now, now. This is no time to lose our tempers. All of us should not be firing questions at Bronco. I'll do the interrogating. I am the judge. Clever, Ma. <laughs> Try. Now, Bronco, you obviously have pertinent information regarding Gildy's whereabouts. Judge, believe me, I can't talk about it. My boy, would you mind sitting in this chair? Well... Sit down, Bronco. Okay, okay. Now then, when you received the phone call from Gildy, what did he say? I've told everybody a million times. He said he was all right and not to worry. Mm-hmm. Where was he when he made the phone call? I can't tell you. Well, where did you go when you left the house? I can't tell you! Guess he ain't gonna sing. <laughs> I know how to make him talk. Shine a light in his eyes. Please, Roy. Bronco, is it true that before you left the house, you packed the suitcase? Yes, Judge. Would you mind telling us what was in the bag? I can't tell you. Then it could be anything. I know a burglar acquaintance who carries his tools in a bag. Man, this is ridiculous. You know that Mr. Gildersleeve isn't involved in anything. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> so far, we don't know what's going on. But Bronco does. Man, please, I can't talk. Gentlemen, I don't think that we should cross-examine Bronco any further at this time. He's obviously distraught, carrying some sinister secret. <laughs> Listen, Marge. Quiet, Floyd. The Summerfield Indicator? That's the newspaper. What? He is? Oh, no. Poor Gilded. Quiet, Judge. And you don't know why? Oh, good heaven. What's happened, Marge? Where is he? Where is he? Uncle Mort's in the hospital. Hospital? He is. My, my. Miss Marjorie, what happened to Miss Gilsey? Well, they won't give out any information. Well, let's go to the hospital. Follow me. Now you follow me. I'm way <laughs> We've been here for hours. It's nearly midnight. Well, why don't we find out why he's here? Well, we've been trying. Hey, hey, that nurse down the hall is talking to Bronco. Oh, he's beckoning to us. Come on, Leroy. Yes, let's go. Stop pushing, Judge. Wait a minute, men. I'm sorry, the nurse said just the family. Oh. <laughs> Uncle Mort's in this room, Marge. Come on, Leroy. Bronco, take my hand. Sure. Oh, what a day. Let us know as soon as you find out what happened. Shh. Well, this is it. Well, come on, let's go in. Uncle Mort, you awake? Unky, oh, Unky. Unk, what happened? Well, the whole family. Glad to see you. I'm glad to see you. How do you feel, Unky? Yeah, I feel fine. Yeah, what happened? What happened? Well, I went to the doctor's this morning, and he said the old appendix had to come out right away. Your appendix? Yeah. I checked in at the hospital and phoned Bronco to pack my bag. Now it's all over. Boy, am I glad it's over. Unky, why didn't you let us know? Well, like I told Bronco, I didn't want anybody to worry. Oh, brother. <laughs> what a character. <laughs> no fuss, no bother, no worry to anybody. That's the way to have an operation, isn't it, Bronco? Bronco? Bronco! Hey, he's fainted! Doctor! Nurse! Bring another bed for my son-in-law! 